I think they're going to show an episode of Gunsmoke for us. Okay, well, we're going to start the meeting. It's 7.04. This, this meeting is uh, being video and audio recorded. <laughs> That's not good. We're on, it's it. Echo. we're on it. We're on it. So this meeting is being video and audio, audio recorded. It's going to be uploaded to YouTube, and it's presently being shown live on Channel 9 for Comcast. Could we all please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance and please remain standing? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please remain standing. Mr. Chairman. Deborah. Thank you. Um, during, since our last meeting, uh, we have lost three residents, uh, Mrs. Edith Howard, Mr. Anthony Mishner, and Ms. Mary Louise Staples. Mrs. Staples served for a number of years on the Dighton School Committee when we were a K-8, 9-12 to system. I think most people knew she lived up on Center Street and she was well known. And in uh, memory of them, I would ask for a moment of silence, please. Thank you. Thank you. Could we uh, close that door, please? So we're going to have a public hearing on of the property tax clarification. Could I, I will entertain a motion to open up the public hearing. So moved. Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstention? The ayes have it. Hello. Sure. Just very recently gave you a little update from the last pack that I gave you. Um, we had a couple of changes. The first pack that I gave you was estimated right to the last special town meeting. So one of the articles that I thought we were going to do as a raise in probation, we ended up using free cash. And we made a little bit of change on our estimated receipts. So that brought our total levy a little bit lower than what I originally had given you. Our total levy right now, we're at $18,594,717. Um, so I have a new spreadsheet on the tax splits. Uh, the last four years we've been using 1.65 as a tax split. If we keep it at that currently, um, it's like the Canyon piece on residential and eight cents on commercial. Does the Board of Assessors have a recommendation on that? Well, or just to, to advise us? I mean, I can give you a recommendation. You know, we're looking at losing businesses. We've lost a couple of businesses right mm -hmm. here on Sunset Avenue. Um, <clears throat> The commercial tax rate is pretty much two to one to residential. So, I mean, if you were looking, even if you wanted to, you know, just take a little more and go to a 1.63 split, rather than the one cent on residential, you'd be increasing it by six cents. Your commercial would go down 25 cents per thousand. Um, I give you these proposed splits residential. The value for residential would be 342600 this year. At the 165 split, you'd be looking at $192.37 increase for the year. If you want to go down a little bit to the 1.63 split residential, you're looking at two dollars. I'm sorry, two dollars. They would love it. Two hundred dollars and forty-three cent increase for the year. On the commercial side, remaining with the 165 split, it would big decrease because the values went down on commercial this year. Mm -hmm. 
they would be looking at $70.66 reduction. With the 163, it was $401.26. So, so why did the value of the commercial property go down? We didn't have, because when we do our revaluations, you know, you always, it, it runs off of prior year sales. We haven't really had any sales to move the values in the past year. Um, residentials are totally different. <laughs> Story, but commercial's not moving much at all in town. And that's what sets values. So, even though if we keep it at 1.65, uh, the tax rate will increase one cent on residential, but what's it, eight cents you said on, on commercial? We still will get less revenue from uh, commercial than we did last year because of the values went down, is that correct? Yes. Yeah. I, I mean, it, you know, it all washes out either way. Yeah. And, the, and the main increase, normally when you see an increase on residential, you usually see the commercial tax rate, I'm sorry, the residential tax rate go down. Mm -hmm. But because we have almost a million, it was 963, if I remember correctly, increase in our levy this year over last year. Mm -hmm. So if we reduce the tax rate for commercial, the residence tax rate will go up, though. Mm -hmm. so it that's, goes up a few more cents, yeah. yeah so that, and that's, that's troubling. But that's what happens with the split tax rate. Right. Is yeah. that this, you, if you raise taxes on one, you still, have, you still raise the same, a, a amount, same amount, amount of, of money. Right. It's just we have to choose. I think the, bur the word you used in here is burden. Um, which I think is appropriate. So, uh, I, mean, I understand. The, I'm sorry. Between the 165 split and the 163, on the residential side, you'd be looking at a one cent increase versus a six cent increase. So, five cents difference. Really. But that one cent increase for residential will equal about, a, on average, I guess, $192. For each resident, so that's that is an increase in taxes. So. Hundred ninety-two dollars yeah. and thirty cents a year, forty-eight about forty-eight thousand a quarter. But even if you go with the highest, the maximum, I think one point seven five split, it's still going to be an increase oh. on residential. So it's, you know, I think we have to make a determination on where we want where where we want to shift the burden or do we want to keep it the same? But there's going to be an increase for residents no matter what. So. I want to thank you for all the information you've oh, given us. Well. It was very helpful uh, I had a lot for me. Of time between our last special time meeting and this one. <laughs> <laughs> so I appreciate that. Yeah, I, uh, this I well. have to say I'm leaning towards keeping it the same. It's been the same <laughs> for the last four years and I don't think I want to change the, uh, but the amount. Yeah, but I, I mean, I just. Sure. I listen to the board members, and I'm going to listen to the, the public. Oh, I agree. Uh, I agree with the Board of Assessors, 1.65, the number. Can you identify oh, yourself? Yeah, valuation, and you're given the amount that is going up on residential. What's the value of the house? How are you basing that on that? 342,600. Yes, that's what you're basing that on. Is there any other districts going up, the electric way or the water district? Are they going up this year at all? We just had them. Um, Prior to this one, the electric, I didn't bring it with me. The electric went from 12, I'm sorry, from 19 cents to 12 cents. Okay. And I believe the water, the water in the fire did go down, but their budgets also went down. So that, that means that their rates are going down? Yes. I don't remember offhand. You can stop in my office. Is there anybody else, the public, who want to ask a question? How much did we over collect last year? Oh, could you please identify yourself? Per mortgage, just the street. I believe the free cash was 1.3. No, no, excuse me. Over collect is not free cash. What is what? Free cash is made up of what's left in the budgets that, does, that doesn't get expended, local receipts and miscellaneous receipts. Local receipts refer to things like licenses, permits, uh, FID cards, any money that the town takes in, those are local receipts. 
So when you hear that we're spending money from free cash, that's not because we've overtaxed you the previous year. When the budgets close out, you either want to be at zero or have a little bit left. You don't want to have a negative number. And then you add all the income you take in, estimated receipts, permits, fees, whatever. That goes to the state and gets certified as free cash. So when you hear the word free cash, it's leftovers, it's income during the year. That's what that is. 1.3 seems a little excessive and we're still talking about tax hikes. Why is not that 1.3 rolled back in so we don't have to raise the taxes? It is rolled back into it because that town, I don't know if you were at the last couple of town meetings, but when you hear an article that says transfer from free cash, that's how we're paying for that article. That, if you hear an article that says raise and appropriate, that affects your tax rate. I so free cash it does. my tax rate because we've all paid this. Sure. For example, though, at the special town meeting in October, we voted, the townspeople voted to spend 400, I forget how much the police station payment yeah. was. 403. 403. Our free cash versus taking it out of the revenue that we receive in taxes. So uh, we do sometimes, you know, a lot of times spell, spend that money wisely. We have $1.3 million. People are obviously are going to ask, come before us, different departments, and ask to spend that. It's up to the town's right. tax people townspeople to decide whether or not they want to spend it. But you do want a surplus. You don't want... I, I agree. And I have to say this, though. Again, year after year, you know, free cash, of course, everybody goes in with a budget. And are we underfunding all these budgets? Are we, are we underfunding? Uh, right. I mean, if they're coming in and we want more stuff after their budget and we're asking for the free cash, why wasn't that right in well, the budget? Well, look, right they're looking at the year? budget when they come before us. They look at the budget. We approve, the townspeople approve it, but we look at it. The finance committee looks at it. And we make a recommendation to the, the townspeople. Once we vote on this stuff, they may still want, a, for example, a police cruiser, but they see that it's not going to be part in the budget. They may want a new ambulance or whatever. Then, if they see the free cash, after we've already had our annual town meeting, they come back to us and say, since we have the free cash, can we spend some, they come to us, meaning you, can we spend this money on a new cruise or whatever, so. Well, as a taxpayer, I'm coming to you to say, can we put the free cash back in and not raise the taxes? We did put in, two. In, in, instead of, you know, keep bumping. The, we the put $200,000 <laughs> of our free cash into uh -huh. Two hundred thousand dollars of our free uh, cash point, please, in, please, into please. stabilization. We spent four hundred some thousand dollars we, for the payment for the police station, rather than taking out a tax revenue. You were going to add yes, one hundred thousand went into the OPEB account. We have these accounts that we have to fund, and they're Listen, I'm almost. Not privy to all this. No, no. I'm just, if we take the no, no. I'm seeing one point three. All right, for one point three. Oh, just let her excuse me. Complete, then oh, you, can, you can speak again. One point three million. Subtract approximately $700,000. Over $400,000 to pay the bond payment this year on the police station. That's a mortgage. Got to pay that. The rest of that money, $300,000, as Mr. Pacheco just said, we put $200,000 into stabilization. That's a savings account. We put $100,000 into the OPEB. That's the pension liability, excuse me, the insurance liability, health insurance liability for retirees that we're required to set aside. So of 1.3, you take off 700,000, we're down to 600,000 in round numbers, and this clearly states we had 333,000 of that 600,000 left. That's in case anything happens this year after that tax rate is set. Once that tax rate is set, if there's a Big expense that comes up, we've got to look where we got funds. What we know is we have 300000 here right now, okay? So that's what Mr. Pacheco was saying. You've got to have a little bit. We have a stabilization fund, correct, that is supposedly to cover anything extra, like you no, said. No, 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 no. We have two stabilization accounts. Yeah. We have a regular stabilization account, and we have a capital stabilization account. The regular stabilization account would be if a disaster happened and we needed money right away to do this. And it would take a, I believe it's a two-thirds majority vote of a town meeting to do it. The, stable, the capital stabilization account had sufficient funds in it a year or so ago. We paid for those modular classrooms at the elementary school. If we didn't have that money, we would have had to borrow it because we certainly wouldn't have raised another million through taxes because we'd have exceeded the levy limit. Mm -hmm. So you have to look at where the money in is and how you're going to spend it. So the 
We put money back into stabilization. As I said, of the 600,000 that was left in free cash, there is still 333,000 sitting right here. Yes, we did have some other expenses. Yes, at the last two special meetings, there were raised and appropriate articles. When we go into the annual town meeting in June, the one goal is fund all the necessary accounts and you cannot exceed the levy limit. And until free cash is certified, you don't know what you have that you might be able to buy a cruiser with or something else. Budgets increase every year because we have collective bargaining agreements that must be funded, okay? They're not exorbitant, but we have them. You can't get away from that. Health insurance is another one. Bristol County Retirement Assessment is another one. Those are, those are other, other than the labor uh, contracts. Those are fixed charges that you must fund. It's not an option. You can't say, let's cut that one this year. No. So yeah, those there are, are the also, expenses, but, Mr. Yeah, Chairman. Keep, okay. You know, you keep saying this account, that account, extra, right? And if there's always free cash, somebody's always going and asking because there is free cash. And it wasn't free. It came from my pocket and everybody else's pocket in town. And, and again, we keep asking for an increase as the values go up. We are automatically have an increase, but not only does the value go up, but now we also have an increase in rate every year. And we always have free cash. Well, it wasn't free. We all worked hard for it. I'm on a fixed income. And then you say, well, it's only 200 bucks more per year, $48 a quarter, right? We're all feeling no, it. Nobody said it's only $200. I, I brought that up because I think the people ought to know how much it's going to be increased. It's $192. Well, no, in, That's in, in affording are two separate issues. And again, we still have free cash and you're still looking for more. And I, I, I also don't like the term free interest. I also don't like the term free cash, but madam uh, Sorry, I just wanted to let you know um, that we've taken over the last couple of years a rather aggressive approach at the budget. So the selectmen look at it line by line and then they make some changes as departments come and request their operating expenses. And then that goes to the finance committee and the finance committee is who presents a budget for the town of Dayton to you all at town meeting. Uh, but they've gone rather aggressively at it. As I, I go through it line by line as well, I make recommendations on my own where I think there might be some overspending and where I think that we might be under. I base that determination on previous expenditures in the budget. We go to, we go to, so I just want you to know that we are actively looking at it. Before we really did that, free cash was up around two million pretty regularly. Um, so I'm, it's a positive, in my opinion, that it's gone down to 1.3. If I look at it that way, where it was 2 million and now it's gone down. If you, do you, if you follow? Positive, but no. you're still asking for more every year. Right. And we could, still you, could, you let it, could you let so it? Could you? So I'm just trying to explain that we're going through a little bit of baby steps incrementally, um, trying to address it. Because I agree with you that sometimes it looks like, why do you have all of this left over? To the board's point, it is not all taxation. We have special articles that we fund at town meeting. Those are capital expenses. You wouldn't put those in your operating budget unless it's a, a lease or something that's gonna be a recurring expense. If it's a one-time expenditure, you generally wanna pay your free, use your free cash for that. Um, if it's a large expenditure, you might wanna consider borrowing, um, but going to the taxes is really a last resort um, unless it's a recurring expenditure, something that's gonna keep us going and providing the services we need to provide. We're gonna put that in our operating budget. So it is something I'm personally aware of. I take a look at the budgets. Uh, we request level funded budgets and we're gonna be starting that process very soon. So I do invite you to come here to these meetings or you can chat with me about them um, as you have the time. But we are gonna request level funded budgets through the budget process and then they'll any department who might need something is supposed to say I need a fire truck I need an ambulance I need whatever it is that they need and they they put that forward in the budget process so when we look at the big picture we parse off what's a necessity what's a want what can wait what might be leased and try to make the least impact on the taxpayer so it's all kind of a large process it's, but I'd be happy to sit with you about there's, it there's still a big number of free cash uh, every year and again, if this free cash, every department is going to ask for something, which they should. And, and let's face it, you can't underfund anything. Right. Totally agree. We have the best roads anywhere around. Great job. Again, you can't underfund anything. But if there's extra money and people want to reach in, which is what they do to free cash, whether it's a piece of property here, a truck, a this, a that, is, if it's there, somebody's always reaching for it. Yeah. But it's all coming out of my pocket. Except, yeah, but, sir. But we decide. It's the we, taxpayers, no matter what this board recommends, and yeah. no matter how much money there is in free cash, 
It's the people who show up at town meeting that say yes or no. Absolutely. So I would invite, uh, we've been trying to get people to come out <laughs> to town meeting. At this point in time, we're getting ready to set a tax rate tonight. The budgets have been set. All of the money's been figured out where it goes. We got 333000 in free cash. You know, the ship has left the dock. We're going to be starting budget preparation. Townspeople are invited to come to those. Find out what's going on. I can tell you there are department heads sitting in this room right now who have asked for things and have been told, no, it's not going to happen. Town meeting in June. Can I get a no? All right. Come back in the fall. Ask in the fall. Ended up giving this department head one or two things, and the others were no. So again, it's all what the people vote. We can bring you articles with all kinds of numbers and say, we got money to cover all of this, but it's the people in this town that have got to vote to say yes or no. Isn't that kind of like I'm here today to ask about where we're gonna set this rate? Well, Probably. the point is the budget, the townspeople have spoken. The budget has been set. The assessors now have got the job of figuring out how do we come up with the money we need that has to be raised and appropriated? That affects the tax rate because we've already covered other items with free cash or in some instance we have a, like revolving accounts like for the uh, sewer department, things like that. People that live in the sewer department pay in and fund those. As I said, the ship has left the dock. The assessors have the numbers. The numbers that the people in this town voted and approved at succeeding town meetings and they're here tonight to figure out how do we do this, and this is our recommendation. So as I said, it's very important that people who want to have uh, be involved in the budget preparation contact the town administrator. These meetings are all open to the public. Some of them are broadcast. Certainly, before we go to town meeting, all finance committee meetings are open to the public. And quite often, the finance <coughs> committee and the selectmen we're not in agreement, and we have to go back and forth and figure out, well, what can we do? So townspeople can certainly participate. Oh, I got you. I've not seen one finance committee meeting televised ever. I don't believe they, are. they have been the uh, televised. The most important meeting in town where everything, all the money gets decided has not yet been televised. No, and no, no. I the like most that. important meeting is the town meeting, sir. Oh. You know, all honesty. I'm yeah. entitled to mine. They control all the money. You wanted to? Yeah, I yeah, just want to make a comment on free cash. As we're working through our paperwork to set the tax rate, we have this thing that's called a recap, and on that recap sheet, it has estimated receipts. So, between myself, the town accountant, we look at what was collected prior year. The biggest one is motor vehicle excise. So you look at motor vehicle excise and say, all right, we collected 1.2 million in excise last year, if that's what it was. How much do you think we're going to collect this coming year for this active year? You don't want to overestimate because then you're going to end up in a shortfall. So you kind of, you know, you, you'll take a little bump on what we collected the prior year. Lots of, time, lots of times it comes up more than what we've estimated. That's part of your free cash. And there's probably 20, 25 items on that estimated receipts that we do. And, and you don't have building permits. I mean, building permits, I, I think, are starting to slow down a little bit, but we've had a big boom in them. You know, and, and again, you don't know what people are going to come in asking for building permits, how much they're going to collect for that. So that's all part of free cash. So it's not all, all coming from taxes. I got you, and it's far from an exact science. Obviously, like excise taxes, hey, if nobody's buying new cars this year, then the excise tax numbers will go down without question. Uh, again, it's just when is the last time we've had, didn't have an excess amount of free cash? Well, we, we, we always want to have free cash. Right, you always want, I mean, there's an adjacent town, I will mention a town to Dighton that had $9 million in free cash. That's pretty, that's yeah, something's going to be I done about tight, that. I'd be really yeah. tight. Another thing that helps us with local uh, receipts is uh, we now have an active stormwater committee. And for example, the Aggie School Project, you pay a rate per square foot of land disturbance. The county paid a sizable stormwater fee to the town of Dighton. All of these solar farms that you see, 
they pay a rate, I think it's now 45 cents per square foot for land disturbance. And when you look at the acres that are disturbed, that's a lot of money. We don't always have those things, but it just so happened that this year we have collected some very large uh, land disturbance fees. Is that going to happen next year? Well, we won't have another Aggie project next year because that's ongoing. Will we have more solar farms? That I don't know. Uh, a big development, uh, a housing development, uh, when Strawberry Fields, assuming it's eventually going to get approved, when they start, they will have a large uh, permit fees. Not only stormwater, there will be other fees, obviously, but those are some of the things that also, big numbers that go into that free cash. Tom. I had a question. Uh, this might relate to it. Uh, Tom, Thomas Berkland, 3076, Hunter Drive. Once this, uh, we have the two marijuana, medical marijuana, there's two projects in the works. There's, there's two marijuana uh, cannabis projects, yeah. Uh, developing, it's on its way. So I think when they did some of the presentations, they estimated, once again, some of the revenue from that. Would, would that help? Is, is that going to help us? Probably, right? It, it will help us, but neither project, to so my understanding, has been given a permit yet to, uh, is still in the process. So we're not going to see any revenue until it's actually uh, opens up. And obviously, with the, for retail, uh, the sooner it opens up, the more revenue the town's going to get versus, I mean, every community now is getting them. The initial ones that started got a lot of revenue. It's going to be reduced as more and more uh, are opened up in different uh, communities. So. Uh, the sooner it opens up, the better off it is for the for the town. But it will help out in the, in the revenue. But we can't at this point decide or estimate as to how much we're going to get from that. So, are there any other questions? Yes. On the stabilization account, you say we have two. How much money do you hold? Is there a certain dollar amount you need to hold in this? Not a, a need, limit. But. No, there's not a limit. Um, the there's regular stabilization about is uh, around. Uh, was it just under a million? Because we million? just put in there and we deducted, and the other one is uh, slightly over a million. Um, it is healthy to have about five percent of your annual budget and stabilization account. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Are there any? You go to the annual town meeting and the fall town meeting, the things that go on there. You guys are already talking up there, and I've been to those meetings quite a bit, and it seems like. Most people just don't even have a clue what they're voting on and just say yes. It's like a herd mentality. When it starts to go to the no side, it goes to the no side. Well, we do publicize the warrants so the public is aware of what uh, different departments are, are asking for. So that, you know, that is public. And uh, like uh, Mrs. Goulart had said, all our meetings are open to the public. People have a right to come in here and ask questions. We have people asking questions. Really about five in the afternoon, you, if you've attended town meetings, and I can say this going back 50 years at least, People don't come to town meetings and bicker over money. They come to town meeting and you get the big turnouts for leash laws, for adult education zones, uh, entertainment zones, on and on it goes. It's not the money items. It's, it's amazing. We can almost say, if we start at 7 o'clock by about 8.15, all of the money articles at the annual town meeting have been approved. School budgets never get questioned in Dayton. Okay? I can tell you back in the day when we had a K to 8 and a 9 to 12 and a, a separate school committee, and when school committees had fiscal autonomy, which was before the education reform bill, we would have some really knock down, drag out discussions at the annual town meeting. Okay? Yeah. But it would usually be the chairman of the school committee and a department head that were fighting over budget money. But Again, we would love to have more people come to town meeting, ask questions, come to our meetings, give us input when we're in the process of putting budgets together. Do you think that if the finance committee meetings were shown on TV, that might stimulate people to come in? I know at work, a lot of people come and say they see me on Channel 9 discuss something when I come down here to talk mm -hmm. to you guys now and then. Mm -hmm. I agree that... Uh, well, there's, some, there's some things like you discussed about the drop-off at the school over there with the kids. Mm. I've seen that on TV. Obviously, I'm home working on the computer, doing my work for work, because mm -hmm. I live there, and I just go home mm -hmm. once in a while, it seems like. But that there would make more sense to me. You know what? Yeah, the school buses are done by 2.30, picking up kids. Have the, the kids when they get picked up by their ride, pick them up 2.30 and after. Give them 10 minutes after the school buses leave before they pick up. We're going off the, the subject right now. No, but I'm, just, I'm just using it as a point. There's things that I see, because I've seen those that I'm aware of. The last thing we did to really get the word out and it seems to have worked very well. We've had good feedback. Yeah. 
and that was to start mailing the warrants. You know, the ones for the annual town meeting, they look like um, newspaper print, yes. but it's a box holder. If you get mail in this town, you get one of those. And we send them out, you know, ahead of the meeting, so people have time to ask questions or read them and come to town meeting and ask questions. Uh, but even that did not get a big turnout response. I think the last big turnout was when we had the meeting to approve the uh, modulus for the yeah, elementary the school. school. But again, it was because there was one issue that a lot of people were concerned about, okay? So, so we had a special town meeting this past Monday, I think 35 or 38 residents. Yeah, we had it present. next door, as a matter of fact. Yeah, that's time was and 6 30, right? 7. No, 7 o'clock. And we had one in October, I think there was 78 people, may have been 80 people at that meeting. So a lot of people don't turn out. To it. But I do agree that the finance committee meetings ought to be uh, televised. It depends on what cable has available. That would motivate people because they can put a, an action discussing in a dollar amount or well, yeah. what's going on. Yeah. But it it's okay to watch it, but if you've got an opinion and you sit at home and don't express it, it doesn't help. From a, <clears throat> from a marketing standpoint, I take a lot of marketing classes. The new thing now that all the companies are doing, Google, YouTube, Instagram is they're pushing video, the video content. Let's, let's get back to the uh, issue at hand, though, the reason why we're having this uh, meeting. If there's no further discussion, I will entertain a motion. Is there a, um, so there's no way of really making that to get those rates to go down then at all, to make the numbers work? Really, it's all about what is appropriated at town meeting and what we are authorized to go forward and spend. Okay, so that, that's where the starting point basically is. Basically, so people have to go to town meeting and just say no to keep the rate to go down. Well, I hope you don't just say no. I hope you weigh whatever it is we're asking for and make the decision that way. But the process starts in February. I just want to let you know that we begin in February, if, in case you're interested in attending. Is there questions that didn't ask that should be asked that? Any topics brought up that we should bring up that haven't come up on this? Is there something we missed on this? I'm not following you. But Is there any other, any other options that we missed on the go to town meeting for discussion on that? Well, the, I, don't, I hate to keep repeating myself. The, ta the, the townspeople have spoken. Okay. I they have approved that. where the money's coming from for every cent that was on a warrant, whether it was the annual or the two specials, right? The only thing we're looking at now is the Board of Assessors has looked at this from all the angles and uh, done due diligence and they've made a recommendation. I'm comfortable with their recommendation because I've been here long enough to, to understand how it works and how they have to do this. Um, yeah, I pay taxes too, um, but as I said, uh, maybe, uh, maybe because I live this every day. I'm more comfortable with it, and I understand the source. I can understand people being upset. Where's all this money going? Um, but again, familiarity is, a, is an important thing. Um, we've also had many years on the finance committee, so you're so. looking at inside and out. And, and we have to be careful with tax payers' uh, money. So I want to mention that they're on a fixed income. We have to take that into consideration. And more and more people, the, uh, I'm not saying you're a senior, but those of us who are seniors, uh, our numbers are increasing versus younger people, uh, so we're becoming a bigger tax base for the town versus uh, younger people, so it's something it's we that, always have to take into consideration. It's that there's a lot of people that come into work, and they, uh, I've known since I was a little kid, and they can't afford it anymore to live here. Yeah. There's no further discussion then. I'll entertain a motion. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I move that we accept the recommendation of the Board of Assessors uh, with the residential split, uh, with a split at 1.65 for uh, residential and commercial business. Is there a second? Second. Is there any further discussion? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, abstention, the ayes have it. Thank you. This is, this is the LA5 that I have to submit to the Department of Revenue. I'm a very passionate one to look at it and correspond with that spreadsheet I gave you to show you the minimum residential split. I just need signatures on the bottom here. Anywhere in the space? Yes, please. So with that, uh, 
those cents increase, what, what would the rate be, Carol? If we can just say that tonight. So, yes, so residential would be at $15, which is $14.99 last year. Commercial is $27.60. Which is an eight cent increase. All right, so it was twenty seven fifty two last year? Yes. Okay. I'll have to hand a motion to close this hearing. So moved. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, abstention, the ayes have it. We're having a second uh, public hearing, a national grid poll location hearing. I'll entertain a motion to open that meeting. That so hearing. moved. Thank second. you. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, abstention, the ayes have it. So is there someone here? Thank you Thank for you. your time. I appreciate the Thank you. Thanks for coming in and giving us your opinion. If I could sit long, I'd be here, but I'm going to be at some more town meetings because... Uh, Don't wait for town meeting. Get in touch with the town administrator. Absolutely. And when information is generated, you can get a copy of it. I thought it was Jim in the office. It's been a while. Uh, yeah, it has been a while. He's had a long time. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Have a good Thank you. Thank okay. You, you too. National Grid? National Grid. Yep. Wow. Hey, have a nice home. <clears throat> okay, good evening. Good evening. John Harry, Senior Designer for National Grid for the Town of Dayton. Um, I'm not sure if you have a copy of the sketch in front of you. Um, I can briefly tell you what's going on. I guess down on uh, Maple Swamp Road is eight lots for sale, which will more than likely become eight houses. Okay. Uh, we have no electrical infrastructure down there at this time. I think the ball field down there is better than the public side. So we end at the corner of Oak and Maple Street. Mm -hmm. So in order to build these houses, the contractor has requested we install overhead line conductors and service conductors having done this at some point. Uh, the nine poles on the right side of Maple Swamp is heading toward the ball field. Mm -hmm. The two poles on the other side to three houses that will be far away from the pole lines. Does the board have any questions? So if we didn't approve this, then the homes wouldn't be able to have electricity? Correct. So would they still proceed to build them anyway? Probably Just in not. your experience? Um, probably not. They couldn't get a building permit without electricity. Yeah, without electricity, right. Mm -hmm. They're all under the assumption that we will get them electricity. Okay, so I'm just curious now. You said the other part of Maple Swamp Road, <coughs> the feed comes in from New Street? Correct. And then it stops? And, it stops. and then you go up to a point uh, at what, Oak and Maple and stop? Correct. So there's, there's a gap, there's nothing there's, at all? There's a large gap. Oh. Maple Swamp Road between the corners of Maple and Oak in the ball field. The okay. Field. So is that new station on Reynolds Avenue in Rehoboth going to help the people in Dighton who, who get that feeder in from New Street? It's not really a but it is part of that that new yeah. station you're building, right? Okay. Are there any other questions? Anything from the public? I'll entertain a motion. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I move that we approve the request of National Grid to install the poles as described on Maple Swamp Road. Is there a second? No. I'll step down and second. Any further discussion? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? No. Abstention? The ayes have it. Uh, just for clarification, uh, Mrs. Brady, would you indicate installing 11 new poles and five anchors with guy wires? Because that's what it, the proposed was. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I want to entertain a motion to close that public hearing. So moved. Thank Second. you as well. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, abstention, the ayes have it. We're changing the, uh, shaking up the meetings a little bit. We're gonna have announcements now rather than at the end of the meeting. So let me go through the announcements. A town-wide parking ban is now in effect until April 1st of next year. No person shall allow any vehicle to remain in the street so as to obstruct snow removal. Police will take notice. The Board of Health meetings have, will be held on a monthly basis beginning January 2020. They presently meet two times a month. The Town of Dighton's food bank distribution will be held next on December 14, 2019, and it is located in the Town Law Hall. I believe it's at 
8 or 8.30. I'm not sure. Is it 8? Here is 8.30. 8.30. 8.30. Here. Here. The uh, annual toy distribution will be held on December 17th. This will be held at the Dyke Middle School. It's from 5. Yeah. Okay. It's from, uh, thank you. That's probably one of the most important announcements. <laughs> uh, it'll be held between 5.30 and 7 p.m. Give, this is for gifts and stocking stuffers. This is for people, uh, children 14 and younger, and it's for family in needs. Anyone wishing to donate toys for the Dighton Lion, Lions toy distribution can drop them off at the selectman's office at Town Hall by noontime on December, December 17th. The annual Dighton Santa ride will happen on Sunday, December 15th with a rain date of December 22nd. The Town of Dighton Holiday Party will be held on Wednesday, December 18th at Town Hall. Town Hall will have a late opening of 10 a.m. on that date. Memorial Day Parade Planning Open meeting is set for January 9, 2019 at 7 p.m. in the Old Town Hall upper level. Let me read the letter that uh, we received from uh, the veterans agent regarding that. The first Town of Dighton Memorial Day Parade planning meeting will be held in the upper level meeting hall of the Old Town Hall 1111 Somerset Avenue, Dighton, on Thursday, January 9, 2020, at 7 p.m. Changes will be made to this event, and I, will, and I want all veterans and residents to be able to take part in these changes. I hope to see representatives from Town of Dighton officials, Dighton Indian Council, all scout troops, packs and dens, the Dighton Lions, Dighton Baseball and Softball League, the New England Tractor Club, Bristol County Aggie School, Dighton Churches, and any other civic-minded individuals. The theme for this parade will be duty, honor, and country. Come and assist us in honoring the military personnel who died while serving in the United States Armed Forces and let freedom ring. This is from Don Hershey, our town, uh, town of Dighton's veteran services. So just so the public knows, we, in years past, we would have a uh, parade on Memorial Day. We hope it's one year and in Dighton the next year. The board voted uh, a few months ago to separate it to have uh, we hope to have their own uh, parade on, on Memorial Day, and Dighton will have their parade. In the prime the last announcement is prime time adult care is seeking clients. If you know of someone who would benefit from meeting new friends, trying new experiences, and staying active, please call prime time at 508-669-6272. And that's the last of our mm -hmm. announcements. Public input? Is there any public input? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I just want to mention that um, a resident of Dighton uh, was recently honored by the Diocese of Fall River. Stanley Koss, who lives on the North End, uh, was awarded the Marion Medal for his service to the uh, uh, church and his uh, church community. Um, St. Nicholas has parishioners from many, many communities, so it's not always a Dighton person, but this year it is Dighton. And um, it is a great honor for this to happen. Um, I actually received it about 10 years ago, but not every year in every parish does someone receive it. So congratulations to Stan Koss for your service. Yeah, thank you. Congratulations. If there's no public input, I ask for the town administrator's report. Thank you. You're welcome. Good evening. Uh, my first item is uh, actually can be shared, I guess, with Selectman Pajigo and Selectman Goulart. We had our Community Resilience Building Workshop, which is part of our MVP. Oh, Mr. Ferry as well. He was there. Our MVP planning process. That's Municipal Vulnerability Preparedness. Really, there's a um, whole arm of this for climate change, impacts on climate change, and how it will disrupt municipal operations and life here in Dighton. And so that's what we spent the day exploring. And I think everybody that came out, we had representation from um, planning board, parks and rec, local organizations, Mr. Joyce at the power plant, um, highway superintendent, police, fire chiefs, uh, Bill Napolitano from Serpid, who seems to be at everything, um, Wenley Ferguson from Save the Bay, um, and then both uh, Selectman Guler and Selectman Pacheco, and some others, so Todd Pilling, Animal Control Officer Stacey Ferry. So I, I apologize if I've forgotten anybody, but it was a very well-attended workshop. It was um, 
very productive and both we broke into groups and we both landed on a lot of the same items to explore which will end up in a plan the next steps on that are um, we're going to actually get the plan then there will be some public forums available for people to come in look at the plan ask their questions about it then we get the final document send it up to MEMA for approval and once we have a final plan um, and that's hazard mitigation and municipal vulnerability once we have a final plan um, approved, we can apply for action grants. Um, the governor is funding these quite aggressively, and um, we could do a lot of work off of those grants, um, work that we're already sort of doing, stormwater management, culverts, um, upgrading them, upgrading small bridges that we have here in Dighton, um, and doing a lot of infrastructure. There's also some smaller ticket items that we could handle virtually for free, um, just in the course of our duties with educating the public, developing um, evacuation routes and things like that. So it was, I thank you both for your efforts there. I think it was a very productive day that really sets us up in a good spot to be prepared for something that could happen. And yeah, so I, mean, I want to just yield the floor. Sure, I, I would like to thank you for inviting me to this, uh, this workshop. It's my first experience with it, so uh, I was impressed with the work of Tom Ferry. He happened to be at my table and all his knowledge of the town and the needs of the town. I know that Mrs. Goulart is uh, part of the core committee, and you've been involved with this earlier, but uh, I really appreciate and have the opportunity to know what's going on in town, and I look forward to that uh, report coming in. I just want to add, uh, no matter how long you've been in this town and how well you think you know it, um, at those meetings, I think everybody that was there heard something different or said, oh, I didn't know that. Or um, because we have people in town who, who uh, know the parts of town that most of us don't travel through, either through hunting or fishing or hiking or that type of thing. Um, there are areas out there where there were some things pointed out that none of us would have known about except because people do those activities in town. So it was, it was educational. And I like the presenters too. They were familiar with Dighton and uh, yeah, Boston O'Neill. Yeah. They do a yeah. good job. So, thank you. I know it's still your That's okay. I will yield the floor to you, Mr. Ferry. Bobby, thank you. We can thank Powell. They had good representation. Charles yes, Bogiard was there. Oh, and Mass CO2. They had a very long meeting and they gave up some good time for that. They did. We also um, are one of the only workshop. The Facilitators told me one of the only workshops that had mass DOT representation. Um, so that's something special. Thank you for saying and that. But I do, I, that's right, Mr. Ransley came um, and contributed, as did, and Mr. Joyce brought two employees. It was him and another employee, mm -hmm. and they, um, they did yeoman's work that day. Yeah, yeah. The lady from District 5 uh, was taking notes quickly because we started talking about Route 44 and the erosion problem from the hill over near the uh, Segregancic Country Club and about how that all that dirt and stuff washes down when it rains hot. And she was taking copious notes because they're going to be doing work on Route 44. And it's something they needed to be aware of that there's an erosion That's problem great. there. That's great. Well, I, I really appreciate everybody's hard work on that. And I do look forward to the plan as well. And we will advertise those public forums. So if anybody at home is interested, you will be invited. We're looking at a spring meeting probably? Um, I think the, Late core team, winter? the core team will meet earlier than that okay. but um, probably March-ish I think for okay. the public forum. We're trying okay. to get it wrapped up in April so that we can qualify for the next round of the climate change. Okay. Uh, excuse me the action grants. Um, my other report is just to sort of keep you on notice that the town has been approached for a donation of three properties um, all of them to conservation efforts so the Conservation Commission is aware and they're working on it. Um, I just, I guess I'm looking for your blessing to explore donated parcels. Are we interested in continuing to do this? Are there some sort of like benchmarks we want the parcel to hit to, to say, yes, we're interested, we'll go forward, or are we just interested in always exploring it? What we've done in the past is we really look at the parcel because we were offered, uh, the last one I can think of that we yeah. declined was down in the park. Uh, it was extremely small, a fraction of an acre. Uh, uh, the residents, uh, the owners no longer live in the area, and it was probably just, let's get rid of it. It's just, you know, but it, it served no purpose to the town, and so we declined the offer, thinking that they could probably sell it to they one of the abutters. Right. Uh, but if, so, as, as I said, we really look at the parcel and look at it for open space, conservation, recreation, or quite frankly, if it's a swamp, 
it still has benefit. For the so, um, right. yes. Right. So, so um, one is uh, two are moving more slowly than the. I mean, more quickly than the other. But I did just want to update you so that you're aware that this is happening. And if you're interested, just check in with the community, uh, conservation commission, and I will do the same. Um, I am announcing that we have an opening for our ZBA office manager, um, Nicole Skylison, who previously served for. Um, maybe just under two years, I think, um, has departed for another position. We thank her for her service, but this position is now open. It's 20 hours a week, it's posted online. Um, it is a union position and um, evaluated at a grade six. So if you go to our website, you'll be able to check that out. You can also check it out at mma.org as we have advertised. And applications are due on the 30th. So I'm ending on a low note, which I normally don't like to do. So we had some considerable damage to our one of our police cruisers, but it happens to be one of the cruisers that wasn't worth too much, um, one of the older ones that had considerable mileage on it. The frame was damaged, um, and when we took it to Mr. Gagnon, he said that he would have to send that out for repair because there was just so much done to it. So we worked with the auction as well to kind of give us a a breakdown of what exactly would need to be replaced. Um, they don't itemize, they didn't cost estimate anything because that's just not what they do, but they were just helping us out. And we uh, collectively made the decision that um, we need to park it. It's not going to be uh, repaired to full factory standard for safety and where the frame is uh, disrupted. I'm not comfortable putting an officer behind the wheel there, especially because it's a pursuit vehicle. So I was we're kind of waiting about how you feel about putting this through to insurance, but it will be on the next agenda, which is next week, to declare surplus that property, that um, car. Um, I didn't think it was worth going through insurance. We have a $1,000 deductible. We're not going to get too much for it, um, and it has to be spent on the cruiser or it goes to the actual cruiser that's damaged or it goes to the general fund. So it won't assist us in replacing the vehicle. If we're going to go through the insurance company, um, I need to know how much money we would net. And my other thought is you don't declare it surplus because the insurance company takes it. They pay if you for it. If, 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 if we go through the insurance company, I need to know the net, what we would get for it, and we wouldn't declare it surplus. They would take it. If, um, well, that's right. I'm not asking surplus yeah. now. She's okay. saying... I think your recommendation is probably, it sounds like, not to. That is my recommendation. Insurance. Not go through insurance. And to declare. Declare it. Declare, declare no, no, this no, no, next no, week. No, no, no. I want to know how much money we will net from it. I want to know whether or not there's going to be a change in our insurance premiums. If it's a few thousand dollars, I don't want to declare it surplus because we won't get a few thousand dollars in a surplus sale. I actually, um, I concur. I think we should at least look to see. Okay, so I won't be able to know that without filing a claim. So mm -hmm. I'll work on that, and the, di the disposal won't be ready for next week. Right, but it, well, we can let the insurance company know. The town will make a decision, but we need the information. Don't, we want the no. data from the claim, mm -hmm. but don't process the claim because the town may say to you, forget it. Exactly. Okay. And we need to know how much the premium may go up. Right, as I, as right. How they yeah. Go up, so. Is that it? That's, I'm sorry, that's okay. it. Yeah. Uh, old business, uh, third reading of the uh, calling and acceptance of policy. Uh, I don't believe we, the last time we discussed this, there were any changes, so I would ask entertain a motion to accept this as a, a policy. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion that we approve the calling policy as prepared this evening. Second. Any further discussion? Yes. Um, there's usually we write upon approval for effective date, so it, what is the effective date of this? I would say, I'm sorry, upon approval, I can add that, but it's upon no, approval. Fine. So tonight, tomorrow, really, because it's the end of the business already. All those, did we already vote? No. no. All no. those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention? The ayes have it. Now, by signing this, you're not doing a Corey check on me, right? No, not yet. No, I'm just is, kidding. Is there I'm a need? <laughs> you have to authorize it still, so you would know. Thank you. But this is a bit of a gateway to another, um, another policy that you'll be seeing very shortly.
The next agenda item is on the new business to ratify the firefighters union contract for the public. Uh, we had a special town meeting this past Monday and we approved, the townspeople approved the funding for this uh, contract. I didn't notice a couple of, uh, I think, are errors. I in, saw spell check errors too, uh, not that they matter. Well, no, I, I don't see want to put in a. Article 34. 34.01 it says employees shall receive the following wages increases retroactive July 1st, 2016. Should that be 2019? It should be 19. Okay. You said that was page 34? No, it's page 27. It was article 34. And on page 3 it says non discrimination. It's supposed to be non discrimination. How is it? No. <laughs> well, if it's not, someone needs to explain what yeah. discrimination is. <laughs> talking about this page 3. Of 41. Mm -hmm. Article 2. Discrimination. Yeah, okay. And on page 23, uh, Article 27.4, it says uh, advanced EMT shall receive an annual stipend of 4,500, and then parentheses it says 5,500. I believe the correct it's figure five. is 5,500. Oh. Which one was that? 23. Second paragraph, 23. So the number should be? 5,500. Not 75? Nope, no, the first yeah. one See, there. it says, it says 4,500. Oh, oh. So it really should be 5,500. All right, so it was page 3, page 23, and page 27. So is there any other further discussion on the contract? If not, I'll entertain a motion. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion that we ratify uh, the fire union contract as prepared this evening with those minor non-substantive changes that were discussed this evening. So we second. I'm going to second it for discussion purposes. Discussion. Um, in all honesty, I haven't had a chance to read through it. I got storm water up to my eyeballs, and I'm going to abstain from, abstain from voting. I approved this. I voted for it at the town meeting. But having not read even half of it, I feel kind of strange ratifying it. So I support the contract. I don't expect to find anything major. So that's why I'm going to abstain. I appreciate that. Any further discussion? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 Oppose, abstention? I abstain. Mrs. Brady, do we have, do we need to sign three copies? Do you have two copies? No, it's only this one page. Why do you need three copies? Because it says at the end that we're supposed to please sign three copies. I would assume one goes to the union rep, one goes to the union, oh, no, no, one no. for the town. Is that the um, appendix page? Hold on. Please sign all three copies and return three copies. I'm sorry. Is that four. the? Oh, is it the grievance procedure? That's the grievance procedure okay. because one is filed for the union. The um, okay. Okay. those need to be filed. So, okay. Yes, I apologize. That's but usually we do more, more than one. We do two usually. Do we have a one second original one? for the? <coughs> we'll print it out and put it there. Excuse, Excuse me. Oh, mine doesn't have their names on it. That's okay. Right? Yeah, it yeah none of them have Only one copy of the MLA. Okay. Oh. No, don't okay. ignore that second one. This was me trying to be helpful right. in duplicated work. You don't have to sign that. We've duplicated it. The next item on the new business review board of health requests that the animal control vehicle be declared uh, surplus. So we, we received, uh, the town administrator received a letter from uh, the chairman of the board of health uh, saying that uh, the ACO vehicle was a gift to the town approximately 10 years ago from the auto auction. 
to the town of Dayton. At that time, it was already a used vehicle with high mileage. Since being utilized by animal control over the years, the vehicle has slowly deteriorated and now has well over 200,000 miles and the ACO ferry has multiple safety concerns. The Board of Health requests that this vehicle be declared surplus by the town. Does she have something else to use? I was just going to She ask was that. supposed to, and then the damaged cruiser yeah. um, foiled that, and that car is now, the car that she was supposed to get um, was the, the detective's damage? old vehicle, and that's now the SRO's vehicle, so that the police operations oh. are considered. So we do, oh, I'm sorry. So should we wait? She's not so using she this. It's, oh. it's not. No, it's off. It's when was the last car time it was used? I was not notified in a timely manner, mm -hmm. but she hasn't been using this for a while because of its condition and so if she, state of disrepair. Who's, and I was not notified so in a timely manner. What would how she they, respond to? Her, 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 how, vehicle. Personal, her, vehicle. her personal vehicle. So we actually, um, Detective Richards is working with the, with the because of this issue, uh, Detective Richards is working with the auto auction to try to see if anything comes across there to help her out and um, find something so she's not waiting until town meeting and utilizing a personal vehicle. But I do believe our um, highway department assists if there's anything major that needs to be taken away. Um, I was just thinking, there's a member of the finance committee that works at a dealership. I, I wonder if he could keep his eye open and just let somebody yeah, know I if... Know that. I uh, know that. Uh, Kevin Perry works for a... Uh, I want to say Toyota or a Hyundai. But I know he works for a dealership. I'll, I'll um, reach out. I think he works in Milford. Can I say something? Just, uh, let's continue our conversation, then you can speak. Now, does this have to be a green vehicle? Does it have to be? So we can't just get any vehicle. It has to meet 2010 emissions. So. So it can be an old. It can be a non-electric vehicle. I, I don't know what you mean by green. If you meant like electric, it well, doesn't have to be electric. Yeah. yeah. So mm. fuel efficient. I'm sure it would be. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't mean to interrupt, but Kevin Perry, you mentioned, mm -hmm. is my neighbor. Yes. And I just talked to him when we had that meeting over at oh, yeah. the town hall. He's changed jobs and works for a different. He doesn't do that anymore. He's oh, he's not in Milford. He went out of the, he's out of the uh, retail automotive business oh. and he's working for him. Okay. He's not yeah. in the oh, okay. Place. I didn't realize that. I mean, you could still, he might still have connections. He's not there. Thank you for that information. That's all. I just thought you might want to know that. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So what does the board want to do? Um, Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion that we declare the animal control vehicle surplus. Is there a second? Second. Any further discussion? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, abstention, the ayes have it. Next item on the new business, approved education center for Alex Green. We received a letter from uh, Fire Chief Christopher McGee. I am writing this letter to inform you that as of November 24, 2019, Alex Green has reached 27 credits at BCC where he is pursuing his associate degree in fire science. In accordance with the collective bargaining agreement, Article 26, Section 3, he is entitled to compensation for 21 credits at $150 per year. I am requesting you, your approval that Alex be compensated according to the collective bargaining agreement. If you have any questions or concerns, please don't hesitate to contact me at any time. My question is, if this is in the contract, why do we even have to vote on a piece? Because it's a change of pay. You have to set his wage and recognize that he's it's not a reimbursement, achieved it's a salary it. increase. Right, he, he's achieved the benchmark for it. Okay. And this is prorated over the year, I guess. He, he will get these. No, it starts tonight once. He has his credits, and then yeah, he, he files. Get, he doesn't get the full amount, right? Isn't it, isn't it spread over the? So there's, if you reach the degree, yeah. in this contract, if you reach the degree, there's, a, there's a, an amount. Yeah. If you have credit hours, there's a, a lower amount for right. the degree, obviously. So he's reaching a certain amount. I think he's at he's the 150 a year. That's right. his. That's where he's reached. So that's what he's getting now. But it wouldn't start until like tomorrow. But you'd have to vote on it. Okay. I'll entertain a motion. Uh, so I'll make the motion to approve the education incentive pay for Alex Green. Second. Any further discussion? If not, all those in favor? Aye. Say aye. aye. Opposed? Abstention? The ayes have it. Is it 60 credits for a, an associate's? I think it is. 
it is spelled out in here. Oh, no, you don't, don't have to look. I should know that. <laughs> I believe so. I think it's 60 because yeah. it's 120 for oh, a bachelor's. bachelor's yeah. <laughs> we all know that one. Yeah. Well, I was doing the math. I'm like, yeah. 15 yeah. is a lot for a semester. <laughs> 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 but you have to do 30, uh, you know. Yeah. Review. The next item is review and approve liquor licenses. So we uh, received a letter from our executive assistant, Karen Brady. Uh, this letter is to certify that the following licenses have filled all the necessary paperwork, paid the fees to renew their licenses, and have had the necessary inspections. Therefore, I am recommending the renewal of the following liquor license. Tom Yacht Club, 44 Liquors Corporation, doing business as 44 Liquors. I'm going to have trouble with that. Have a Childess. Have a Childess. Have a Childess. Corporation, doing business as Mendoza's Liquors. 1712 Tavern, Inc., and Winthrop Street Gas Corporation, doing business as Mobile. Mobile of, uh, of Dighton, Mobile of Dighton. I had one question, Mr. Chairman. Yep. I thought we, I thought we just didn't, didn't we just recently within the last, like this year sometime in 2019 approve the transfer of 1712s? Right, but you, you're asking so that, for the year 2020. Okay, so it's for next year. I'm just yeah, making yeah, sure yeah. we're not like... Nope, all of this is... Double dipping on 4, yeah. 7, 12, that's all. Um, what about... Um, do we... Is beer and wine separate? Alice's isn't on here. They have beer and wine. Yeah, they're waiting for an inspection, so they'll oh. come next week. Oh, okay. All right. How many... Oh, I'm sorry. <clears throat> How many are we waiting on if we approve all of these this evening, Mrs. Brady? I don't need to put you on the spot. Approximately how many more are outstanding for licenses? And are we at the, and this is for Madam Administrator, are we at the maximum? No, no, you're not. What would be the maximum 14. for our town? 14. So we would have four. Well, it's actually, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm misspeaking. It's five beer and wine, am I right? Five beer and wine and 14 on premise? I'm sorry, five, five beer and wine, 12 on premise? Mm -hmm. uh, owl alcohol, and that's for on premise? It's something like that. And then is it three packaged beers? Three off premise? Yes. You're making me thirsty. <laughs> <laughs> We have Belmont Springs out there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you don't need a permit. No. Uh, Mr. Thank you Chairman. Karen for doing all the work. Uh, yeah. and, and having this uh, for us. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion. We approve the liquor licenses for Taunton Yacht Club, 44 Liquors, doing business as 44 Liquors. Have a Childish Corporation doing business as Mendoza's Liquors, 1712 Tavern Incorporated, and Winthrop Street Gas Corporation doing business as Mobile of Dighton. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention? The ayes have it. Thank you. Go ahead. Can I have a double meeting on? That's referring to the beverage, not yes. the individual. <laughs> uh, the next item on the new business, accept the resignation of uh, Officer John Meadows. Did you want to read it, Mr. Yeah, Chairman? I'm going to read it, yes. I am writing to announce my resignation from Dighton Police Department effective immediately. I enjoyed my time here, and I enjoyed working for this department. However, I have decided to take an opportunity and will be re relocating. Thank you for the opportunities and I have had this, I have had for this department. Cecilia yours, John Meadows. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion that we accept the resignation of John Meadows from the Dighton Police Department with thanks and appreciation. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention? The ayes have it. The next item is to accept the resignation of Richard Only Jones. It, it's with deep regret that I must conclude my short time with the Dighton Trails Committee. My job is changing requirements, which means I will be traveling quite a bit, plus working silly hours, that's in parentheses, due to the <laughs> nature of my current job, working midnights, etc. But this is what happens when the when in the information technology field, and our work must be completed after normal working hours when systems can be taken down or offline. I'm so, so sorry, my time with the team was so short, but I'm 
two years from retiring, and I need to do everything I can to sustain employment. Kind and warm regards, Richard Ole Jones. Mr. Chairman, before I make a motion, um, was it Mr. Only Jones's intention to also resign from the Open Space Committee as well? Didn't we act on him already on something? We did. We appointed, we appointed. him to the Trails Committee and oh. the Open Space Committee, and I'm not sure if he was ever, if he ever even was sworn in for Open Space. I believe he was also appointed to the Bylaw Committee. Yes. And, yeah. They were, they were. Um, so I wrote back to him that he was, if he was interested in, the, you know, does this mean you're resigning from everything else? And he. I don't think seem to think he was on either of those committees. So yeah. The intention is to stop all town service. The reason um, I, asked I did get that is from because him. I was in touch with another committee chairperson, the open space committee chairperson, and she also was unaware that he was even on the committee. So I don't know before we make the motion if we also wanted to. Well, he didn't really resign from them in his email, so I don't know. No, we just need to contact him and find out his intentions because he would have to give us a second. Right, yeah. Well, his intentions are to leave all town service. He just responded that he was, I go, does this mean you're, you're oh, going to resign from everything? He so he's he was not aware he's on bylaw committee and the okay. um, oh. open space. So he just, he didn't know to resign from them because he didn't know he was on there. So. And that makes he, sense. His intent okay, is to, uh, he was also exploring the Conservation Commission, and he said he could no longer do it. So um, the intent is to remove himself from all positions. Okay. I'll entertain a yes. motion. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I make a motion that we accept the resignation of Mr. Richard Olney Jones from the Trails Committee, the Open Space Committee, and the Bylaw uh, Review Committee. Second. Second. <coughs> Any discussion? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, abstention. The ayes have it. May I make a comment on those three committees? They are all now in need of a quorum. If you'd like to volunteer your time, um, please submit letters of interest. I do have a request to um, my colleagues that on the next meeting, um, I, I've already been in touch with the Open Space Committee uh, chairperson. My concern with not having a quorum is that they are unable to meet to finish the open space plan. And um, the reason why that's important is because the open space plan needs to be completed in order for us to be eligible for other conservation and land use grants. So I'm gonna ask uh, to be appointed maybe as an, I, I don't know, ad hoc member. That won't solve the quorum problem, but I'd like to at least work in some sort of an official capacity um, with them to make sure that we get that done. You would serve on that committee. We can appoint you to that committee I as a regular also member. Was on it. Uh, excuse me, former Selectman Taylor was on it before um, he was off the board as well. I don't know if he was or not, but I'm on the stormwater committee, so yeah. we, we, you can be on open space. I just want to make sure we get that plan done. Of course, we're going to make yeah. you apply and we'll interview you. Yeah. <laughs> so it's not a guaranteed thing that you're going to. I understand. You're going to yeah. qualify. <laughs> I'm but a hard worker. We, we can uh, be appointed to, to boards and committees if we're re representing the board of selectmen, mm -hmm. right? And not just to be appointed. We can't appoint ourselves mm -hmm. to a, a particular board. Correct. Correct. And I would For be example, I'm on the historic commission. I was appointed prior to uh, being elected as selectman, mm -hmm. and my term expires in 2021. If I, mm -hmm. a lot of things can happen. If I'm still here, then I can't be reappointed. But if I'm not here, then I can. But you could appoint. be. You could be. You can be the board's representative. Are, right, yes. but may not be a board. That's like all those so. mm -hmm. those things I go to. I'm the board's rep. I'm on the 40B. I'm on other committees. So, uh, but okay. Yeah. No. So. And I don't. I don't, I don't think actually, you would need to be an ex officio in this capacity because. Well, I was thinking you, ad hoc. Yeah. Same. Right. Like um, just I come yeah, in. Yeah, a representative, but not necessarily a voting member. Right, because the committee was set up to have those many seats, and none of them were designated as the board, as far as I'm aware, but designated as the board's rep, board's rep. So you would have to create a new position as a board's rep, but it doesn't solve your quorum problem, right. it makes it worse. So, but I, I would feel more comfortable yeah. in that way if, for example, um, I meet with, uh, because they technically would not be breaking the open meeting law, the two members of the open yeah. space committee, at least in that way, I can come back and report to the board on what progress is being yeah, made. No. And you gotta keep moving with us yes. to get the work done. To get yeah. the, uh, we you have know. to keep moving and also we received, or we 
reallocated some surfit hours, so I also need to contact surfit to see um, what progress has been made in, in that okay. avenue as well. Those three this. boards again: Dighton Trails, mm -hmm. Open Space, and what's the other? Bylaw one? Review. Bylaw Review. Which okay. I have some things for them to look at, so I need them to meet. <laughs> but they're all very important. So. Right. So uh, for Richard Only Jones, uh, we appreciate the work, uh, mm -hmm. your interest in being on these committees and board boards for the town. Mm -hmm. And on December 11, 2021, when you retired, we look forward to you coming back and uh, being part of this. We'll save this email. Yes. Can I ask a question? Nancy's looking at uh, Excuse me. You volunteering for a committee? I was going to ask a question what the quorum was. Is it three? It's three. So you need one person? Yes. And so do they meet? What the town administrator was saying is, I have to. I think they follow the. They were following the planning board schedule, so it would be the first and third Wednesday of every month, and they were meeting before planning, so 5 p.m. So check with the boss, and I'll let you know. So okay. if you're interested, uh, get in touch with uh, Karen and file. You know, give us a okay. volunteer fill out the volunteer form, and perhaps we can address it next week at, at the meeting. As the, I just wanted to, so the reason why we would still need a third person is because I would not be a voting member. Mm -hmm. I would just be there to... What do they do, by the way, can I ask? Yeah, so they're working on an open space plan. So that would be... Open space? Correct. Like a plan Land to... preservation. Exactly. And they're going to weave that into the master plan from 2014. I might the rest of that. And it would only be through the, the rest of this year. Yeah. Through June. Great. And you, if you... If you, like if you stay on it at least for the six months, hopefully all the work will get done so that they can file. And then you can ask not to be reappointed, or if you really like it, just say, I want to be reappointed. That might be up, yeah. What's interesting I found, if I could just take a moment of your time, is uh, it relates to this. I volunteered, my first committee was the town administrator selection committee mm -hmm. with some nice people that I mm -hmm. met and got to know. I didn't know anyone. And what I did was I stuck my head in that door over there at your office, and they said, hey, I got something for you we can try it out, you know? Next thing I know, I get a letter, and I'm, I'm on. And now I've been, I haven't left since. <laughs> I've, been, I've been involved, but I actually like it. I think it's interesting. I know it sounds. Government is interesting. I find it, you know, I'm retired, <laughs> and I find it interesting. I don't know why. I feel like I have to stick up for this industry. It is interesting. Yeah. It's I like, find it why would I be here? It's like going to school. There are some subjects you'll love. There are others you say, yeah. why am I doing this? But in this case, idea. you get to pick and choose what you want to do. Well, I will also it. mention to you, if you are uh, on the Open Space Committee, mm -hmm. the land that the town has just about purchased, we haven't, we haven't you know, given them the money yet, but that piece of property on Brook Street is part of the open space recreation. That whole thing and the use of it is, so that will be interesting. Well, I'm on the CPC, which I find very interesting. Mm -hmm. and, and I first met, uh, well, I don't want to go back into all that, but business, getting business in this town I find interesting because it's such a complex thing with the infrastructure. But I think it's moving forward, I personally. But that's me. You know. this, this is a good connection for you because it was CPC money, CPA uh, money that we yeah. used to buy the Brook Street exactly. land. Yeah. So, well, you Tom, thank you. Thank you for all, all that you do for the town, and hopefully you'll uh, join this committee. I thank you for thanking me for thanking you. I, you know that commercial? <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay, moving right along. Nine o'clock, we're, we're no, leaving. So, uh, do we call the vote? Nine o'clock is when we're leaving. Yeah, oh. <laughs> do we vote on it? Did we, right. did we not vote on that? Just kidding. Um, we did. We did. And then I just made a. I I started speaking out. Okay. Okay. No, okay. no it was me. I started it. Too. <laughs> I, I opened the door, yeah. Mr. Chairman. I'm closing the door. All right. The next item is, is <laughs> discussing dates for the open house for the annual. We got to open it up for the open house. You got to open the yes. door. Like open that. That's good. Got to open it back. So my understanding is that the uh, animal shelter is complete. Uh, mm -hmm. I would do. I would ask that before. We open, have an open house, though, that the ADA coordinator they take a look at the ramp. I understand the ramp is there now. It wasn't when he first addressed it, but the ramp is there now just to make sure everything's okay. Uh, I think we can set a date now, but we can just arrange that sure. ADA coordinator to take a look at it. My one concern, that that's fine with the ADA yeah. coordinator, I agree. Um, my one concern would be, and you may have already done this, Madam Administrator, is making sure since um, State Senator Pacheco um, 
was really a pivotal reason the animal shelter um, was able to be constructed with the grant funds he got for us. I would want to make sure that um, not only him, uh, but also uh, we met the senator from Westport, um, who was also quite supportive and sounded like he might um, want to work with the town of Dighton in some capacity going forward if we might want to check with their schedules first before we set a, a concrete date on that. So is this before the holiday, January? Are we looking oh, sometime at after, after New Year's, yeah, yeah sometime after, after that. The yeah. I wouldn't want to wait too long. Is no. it being utilized now? Or? Not no. yet. I think there's like finishing touches. I see the lights when I go by. Yeah. <laughs> it looks nice. It really does. It does look yeah. nice. And, and wow. we got to check with Pat because yes. she, obviously yep. she's she'll right be invited. She's right here on my list. Yep. Um, yep. No, it's a, it's a nice facility and I'm happy because it's climate controlled and can um, be a suitable location. So. I like it. I've been... The date will depend on whether or not the Patriots are in the Super Bowl Correct. because that's how we had to do the Old Town Hall. That's the most important so and then everyone's we, schedules underneath. <laughs> are we um, like Saturday, Sunday, morning, um, afternoon? I'm trying to raise like, that point. What, what is good? I think it might be easier. Well, I'll let my colleagues decide. I think a Saturday is always... You, you get some more people. As long as it's not too late into Saturday, because I get commitments Saturday mm -hmm. afternoon. But we can, what do you think? Yeah, 10 a.m. I'm thinking morning. Well, it, yeah, that's fine. Okay. Before people's day gets going. Yeah, and before yeah. before the yeah. um, before the sports teams start up again yeah. and yeah. all of the we things kids do. Too, so. <laughs> so a Saturday in January at 10 a.m. We will advertise. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Selectman's reports. I have nothing to report. I, I did not attend MMA today. I was all ready to go, left the house just before 8, drove by Dr. Z's house and said, I must be nuts. <laughs> so I just went straight down Tremont Street and made that right on Lou Lane. Bingo, I was home again. So I sent an email to, uh, I sent an email to um, uh, Ariella, uh, love it, and said, uh, please get in touch with me and tell me how to call in because we've got people... The person who chairs the committee comes in from Wilbraham. Yeah. And uh, so anyhow, um, I didn't hear from her, so I got in touch with her again. They did have the meeting, and what happened was she, she had gone on a trip to India, and she's been sick since she came back. And she had a doctor's appointment, didn't check her email. So she's going to send me all the information. It was, uh, it was a continuation of the information I gave you the last time about best practices and things like that. Uh, and... and um, <coughs> That information we got from the uh, the Rivers group that wanted us to act on a letter about sewage mm -hmm. discharge. So uh, Mrs. Brady uh, scanned it in and sent it to her because I was taking that in to give it to her so that they could, MMA could see what we got in, you know, they'll have it in the file. Um, so, oh, I, I brought this in and this is, I want to pass this on. Um, North Attleboro has received a large grant and they talk about things like um, competitive cities and town, financial help to pay for infrastructure projects, super, and spur economic growth. I was thinking of the sewer study. So I just passed that on uh, and um, eventually to uh, Mrs. Arenstein because uh, I don't know if that's a grant we're aware of, but when I saw infrastructure and economic growth, I thought, whoa, maybe we can get some of that. I have a couple things. Um, you, do you have anything, Mr. Chairman? No, I, I mentioned earlier. Really, I don't have anything. Okay. Yep. My apologies, Mr. Chairman. Um, I do have just a couple brief things. So, uh, Town Administrator Aaron Steen and I uh, attended a reception for State Representative Pat Haddad last week. Um, it was very nice. There were uh, a lot of uh, influential people on Beacon Hill were present, so it was nice to um, be able to converse and discuss different issues that are going on in our town. There was a lot of interest around the town administrator being the first town administrator uh, for Dighton, uh, which was nice and, and deserve it. Uh, the other thing I wanted to mention is uh, something came across my feed today from our state representative, Pat Haddad. Um, she received, uh, our fire department was awarded funds for safety gear and gear cleaning machines. So Dighton Fire Department received $2,480 for turnout gear and $3,800 for washer extractor equipment grants. I thought it was timely because 
Um, uh, on Monday evening, Mr. Person, you were there. Uh, voters approved uh, funds for the purchase of uh, second sets of gear, uh, which was nice. So, um, and then we all attended Lights On, which was um, always a nice event. Um, and that's all I have, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you. That was a very good turnout for Lights On. Yeah. I feel like that was forever ago. The weather was okay. nice, too. I feel like that was so it was long, a long cold, ago. But, uh, yeah, it was chilly. I know, our, everyone's toes. Uh, no correspondence, no acknowledgments, minutes. I do want to say, I don't, I'm not sure I received the minutes for the 28th and the 30th. If I have, I haven't looked at them, and, so I apologize. Okay. Which one was it, Mr. Uh, the 28th and the 30th. I have reviewed the 13th, and I do have So you just want us? If we could hold up until next week, yes, until okay. next week to pull those minutes. I um, know we're trying to get them passed as quickly as possible, but I... Okay, you know, how did we do... How were the minutes for the joint meeting... Oh, no, I take that back. The town administrator was there. I'm thinking of the meeting we just had with them. Right, October 30th. That was the selection of the two-town moderator, I believe. Oh. Yeah, yes, it was. But that was recorded as well, so I okay. think Karen or Leanne helped me out with that. Yeah, you were there, but... Uh, I was there. Yeah. Yeah. The so, minutes of um, November 20th. This was the one that I made the motion about the wood on the side of the road, and I said, Karen, i got to work on that. So I've written something. I just want you to listen to it, and I can give you copies of this. And I ran out of, I ran out of red ink. It was a disaster. <laughs> so I had to go with blue ink. Okay. for you. So, <laughs> yeah, right. Um, so I just want to read this the way I wrote it to, to try to clarify what I think what we were trying to do. So I want to I want you to say that's not exactly what we mean or yeah that works so that Karen will get this. Um, Selectman Goulart motion, Selectman Zagraf a second. It was voted that the Board of Selectmen declare tree wood, wood chips, compost and mulch available at the transfer station as surplus items for town residents. Wood cut by the highway department and left on the side of the road would first be offered to the property owner. If the property owner declined the offer, the wood would be considered surplus and available to residents. Roadside wood should not be removed from private property without permission of the owner. So is that basically what we were trying to say? So that- It was basically, I think you said that. You, would, you actually- Well, I, had, I was yes, saying so all this yes, stuff, but I, right. I said to Karen, I've yeah. got to work on that. Okay, no, so, so no, that was the- I'm okay with that. Mm -hmm. yeah. The rest of it was just the usual kind of things that I- <laughs> whatever. So I want to take a motion to accept those uh, minutes for review, November 20th. So moved. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, abstention, the ayes have it. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion that we approve the minutes of the regular Board of Selectmen's meeting of November 13th, 2019. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, abstention, the ayes have it. <laughs> Approval of the warrants. Mr. Chairman. I move that the following warrants be approved. 22A-20, $116,328.38, dated November 27th, payroll. 23A-20, in the amount of $96,992.28, payroll. 23B-20, in the amount of $85,761.63, accounts payable. 23C-20 in the amount of $1,331.98 accounts payable, dated December 4th. 24A-20 in the amount of $111,478.33 payroll. And 24B-20 in the amount of $122,241.58 accounts payable, dated December 11th, be approved. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, abstention, the ayes have it. I'll entertain a motion to go into executive session. We're going to be going into executive session. Uh, we will not be uh, returning. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion that we enter into executive ses session, excuse me, under Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 30A, Section 21A, Numbers 2, 3, and 6, 2, to conduct strategy sessions in preparation for negotiations with non-union personnel or to conduct collective bargaining sessions or contract negotiations with non-union personnel, town administrator contract request, 
three, to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining or litigation. If it, an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the bargaining or litigating position of the public body and the chair so declares, union negotiations for clerical and 911 signal callers, and six, to consider the purchase, exchange, lease, or value of real estate if the chair declares that an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the negotiating position of the public body, vote ramp road. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Roll call. Aye. 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 Cable. Good night, Cable. Good night, Cable. We'll see you next week.